But what I want to do is compare them in relation to their respective populations. Um, now we're going to do populations because we're going to be considering all the players on the Miami Heat as a population during that year, and all the, the presence of the United States throughout history. So that would be considering the entire group of people. Are you with me? We haven't sampled it. We're taking all of the Miami Heat players. We're taking all of the um, presence of the United States. Okay, so we'll be using this one. We'll be using this here. We're not sampling. It's a population in this particular case. Glad you have you with me on that. Okay, so we're going to compare these two guys. Lyndon B. Johnson, let's say LBJ. He was 75 inches tall. How tall is that? Because we don't say, oh, I'm, I'm 64 inches tall or whatever we say. We say, I'm like... Six four. Six. Actually, he was six four. Let me change that. That's six four. He was six foot four, the same height as Abraham Lincoln. Just in case you're wondering, they're both six four. So they equal. Did you know that? No. Now you know that. Isn't that interesting? I just found out that today because I wanted to make sure my stats were right. Um, so I looked it up on Google. I'm sure they're right. They're always right. So anyway, uh, 76 inches is six foot four. Abraham Lincoln was six foot four. We're just going to give it to LBJ because he's newer and we know who well, we know he is. We could give it to Lincoln though if you really want. Just change that to Lincoln. It's the same idea. Um, so he was 76 inches tall. That would be six foot four. You divide by 12. The remainder is your inches. So we got that. Now, the mean for presidents, so if you take all the presidents' heights over history, you add them all up, you divide by the number of presidents, however many there are. How many are there? Oh, a lot. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, several, more than like four, right? Like 40, 50 something. Are we in the 50s? Isn't that horrible? I don't know this. Oh my gosh, I feel so ashamed. But it's a number, right? I should know. Okay. I really don't. I don't know how many exactly there are. We're, we're close to 50, though. The mean height for presidents, that's what I mean by mean for presidents. The mean height for presidents is 71.5 inches. So on average, they're a little under 6 feet tall. They're like 5'11 uh, and a half on average. Some are shorter, some are taller. The shortest guy was 5'4". Uh, I think it was 5'4". Mad Madison. I'm pretty sure. I just looked that up on Google. Let's Google's wrong. <laughs> Maybe it's too, I don't know. But, so average altogether, they have almost six feet. And the standard deviation for these presidents is 21 That's all the information we're going to need to be able to calculate what's called the z-score, to calculate how far away Lyndon B. Johnson is away from the, the president's uh, average height. That's what we're going to be doing, to see how, how far he deviates. Because we want to figure out, is this, is this rare, or is this normal, is it, is it usual? And then we can compare his, his uh, z-score, how far away he is, to Shaq's, and see which one is relatively taller. Clearly, Shaquille O'Neal is going to be absolutely taller. You've heard of like absolute and, well, maybe you haven't heard of like absolute and relative. Absolute means highest considered all values, just the real biggest. Absolute max would be that. Absolute minimum would be the, just absolutely the smallest thing that happens. But relative compares in a small area. So relatively, we're going to consider um, compared to their respective mean, the respective other presidents, and for Shaquille O'Neal, the respective other Miami Heat players. Are you with me on this? So absolutely, Shaquille O'Neal is taller. But relatively speaking, compared to their own small groups, who's taller? And we can do that with the z score. So is that calculated? Yes. That's good for them. Yeah, really. It shows them who's boss. Really, always the right answer. Throw mine on the ground at least twice a week.
Okay, Shaq. Shaq was, you seem to know heights. He was 85 inches, right? He's like 7 foot 2. Seven three. Seven two. <laughs> <laughs> Eighty five is only seven feet. Oh yeah, so seven two. Uh, he'd be seven one then. I give him seven one. Should we make it eighty six yeah, then? He's seven two for sure. I'm pretty sure he's seven two. Okay. <laughs> seven two is is eighty six inches. Yeah. Now we're we're considering old data here, so this maybe he shrunk. Maybe. No, he would, he would grow. Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. I've always shrunk older. like an inch. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the camera takes away like four inches too. So I mean, I'm really, I'm really like six five. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Shaq's height's eighty five. We're considering old data, so we're going to consider the the Miami Heat. And let's say I don't know if this is accurate or not, but let's say the mean for the heat. I think they had some relatively tall players at one point. They might have been the tallest basketball team at one time. I think that's where this came from. It was 80 inches. And they had a standard deviation of 3.3 inches. The question is, who is relatively taller? Of course, we just answered Shaquille O'Neal is absolutely taller. He's 86 inches compared to 76 inches, for sure. But relatively compared to their own individual populations, who's taller? By the way, I, I said this earlier, but we're going to be using the, the z-score for samples or populations here. Because we're considering all the presidents and because we're considering all the Miami Heat players when he played, okay? That's why we're using populations. So we're going to use a z-score. for populations. This is these four populations. So what I'm going to do with you, I'm going to help you out with doing this z-score, and then you're going to do this on your own. It's really not a hard calculation to do. It's just a subtraction and then division problem. Here's what you need to make sure of. I hope you're listening. Even though it's easy, you can make mistakes on it. Listen carefully, please. Two things. First thing, make sure you're always doing this in the correct way order. You will get negatives here on some cases. The reason why you would get negatives is if you have a value that's less than the mean. In our case, we have two values that are greater than the mean. You see what I'm talking about? But you must do it in the correct order. It is never that you take the mean minus the value. It's always the value minus the mean. That's going to give you positive if it's greater than the mean and negative if it's less than the mean. Are you seeing that? If you do it the other way, it's reversed. It's switched around. That, that's not going to work for you. And you can't switch it back and forth and go, I always get positive z-score. Yay! That doesn't really that doesn't work that well. Okay. So we need to always stick with the same routine. You take the data value itself minus the mean. Also, try not to round that number too much. Because remember, you're going to have to divide, and you'll probably round after that. So if you round twice, if you've rounded too much the first time, it's going to be just a bigger problem the second time. You don't want to do that. So here's how you calculate the z-score. For LBJ, we're going to do z-score over here. Z-score says you take x minus mu over sigma. In our case, can you please tell me what the x is? Yeah, absolutely. That's the data value. That's his height. Minus the mean for all the presidents, that is, in this case, sure. And lastly, we'll divide by the standard deviation for those presidents, and that's given to you also, that's 2.1. So what we do is we, just like order of operations tells you to do from a long time ago, you do the subtraction problem, which isn't a very hard one, and after you get that answer, then you divide by 2.1, and you can round it to one to two decimal places. I would say, because you're given some decimals here, round it to two decimal places after the number, and use the rounding rule most of the time. 
So we subtract that, we get how much? 4.5, sounds good. Divided by 2.1, so we're going to do 4.5 divided by 2.1 and get... 2.14. Great, we got a number, 2.14. This is useless if you don't know what that number means. Okay, got 2.14, great. I don't want you to just get through this class just using numbers where they're appropriate. I want you to understand what we just calculated. Anyone have any idea what we just calculated? Distance away from the mean, like how many, uh, how many standard deviations away? Exactly what we, what we did. Okay. We didn't count. We we were not an even number of standard deviations away. If you looked at it this way, if you added 2.1 to 71.5, you'd do it 2.14 times to get 76. So you are 2.14 standard deviations. We're not an even number of standard deviations. We're 2.14 standard deviations away from the mean. So we're like, remember those marks you made earlier? Like one, two, and then a little bit. Karina, you with me? Uh -huh. In our um, homework and on your exam, are you going to give us like the height, the mean, and the standard deviation? No, you got to make it up on your own. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm <laughs> kidding. Yeah, you told, I'm totally going to give you all this information. <laughs> <laughs> Guess right, okay? No. <laughs> it's, it's all going to be there. All you have to do is be able to calculate the z-score, interpret it, tell me what it means, and then use it. That's all I want. Uh, I want you to understand it. Uh, but it's not hard math-wise. Statistics is really not hard math-wise. You, you have a calculator. All this is is punching numbers into formulas. I give you the formulas. You have a sheet for the formulas that let you do the test. But um, you have to understand it because if you don't understand it, you will not be able to apply it to the problems that are on. Are the formulas going to be on the exam or have to be on the You have your book, right? Yeah. There's a pull-out sheet in your book. It looks like this. See? Feel like I'm doing show and tell. Uh, it looks just like this as a pull-out sheet. You may use this on your test and nothing else. Okay. Um, if you need extra tables, I will give you a, a printout of extra tables attached to your test. Do not write on this because I will not let you use it if you write on it. Okay. So I, I will check this every time we have a test. Have this, no writing, and you can use this. This has all the formulas you will ever need. If there's more than that, I'll write them on the board. The tables are on the back, and we'll be using these fun-looking tables. Aren't you excited? Yeah, of course you will. Even I'm excited uh, for those. Thanks. So that's what you can use. Okay, back to the math stuff. Are you okay on calculating the z-score? Raise your hand if you can. All right. Uh, now, again, what's the z-score mean? Everybody. <laughs> uh, number of standard deviations. <laughs> it's the number of standard deviations a data value is away from the mean. It's exactly this thing. It's exactly that every single time. So when you calculate the 2.14, it says that that data value is 1, 2.14 standard deviations away from the mean. That tells you how far it is, right? It tells you it's varying that much from the mean. It's away from the mean. By the way, using the rule of thumb, within two standard deviations was considered 